Someone made a comment. I don't get many views, so I don't get many comments. So someone was happy that I'd called out bullshit thumbnails and bullshit titles. And by that he means I was having a bit of a crack at seven things you must do, 11 best caravan parks in Australia, and all those sorts of things. Interesting, another set that really amuses me are those seeking drama. And I'll just give a couple of examples here. And I'm not sure in one particular case if the people involved are just not up to what they're doing or if they've just put this together for the, the dramatic side of it. But I'll start with the TV. So I, I, I think these people think they're somewhat influencers and I don't watch them anymore. You put out one video about weights and what cars can and can't tow and he didn't really have the understanding of what he was trying to talk about. My case is the other one. I sometimes can't talk about it. It doesn't come out right. But I sure have the understanding. So I'm not sure what caught my eye on this video, but their TV arm had ripped out of the wall while they were driving and they didn't think that was quite right and they were seeking compensation or replacements or whatever. And I'm thinking if you're driving around without securing that arm and without taking the TV off, you probably deserve most of what you get. So my feeling here is that one, it's either for the drama. Two, it's been a very poor handover experience. But even so, I'm going to stand there and I'm going to think, gee, this arm's going to swing about a bit with that TV on it. Probably not a good idea to have the TV on it. So at our handover, you know, you take the TV off, disconnect it, pop it under your made bed, under your sheet there, put your pillows on top of it, and link your arm back, pin your arm back with the pin provided. Clearly there's different sorts of TVs, and we've got the really simple one, which is suits me fine suits us fine i watch a lot of tv no time for that but video got thousands and thousands of views drama see drama the other one was quite interesting and again i don't watch this bloke anymore either but somewhere in their travels they'd been on or they were on rough roads and the entire front left wheel on the car had come off and it was diagnosed that the wheel nuts had worked themselves loose all the way to coming off or the movement in the wheel shearing them off or cracking them off but the wheel had come off and big dramatic 20 odd minute video to be perfectly honest i'd be embarrassed to put that up now i don't know maybe i come from a different genre a different era i don't know i would check my wheel nuts every couple of days if i'm doing a bit of driving if i've had new tires put on or if i've had a repair or I've had a rotation and balance. I check them every few hundred kilometers for a bit until I can't take any more up. The other part of that story is I'm thinking that as these nuts are getting loose, you're getting some fairly serious vibrations through the steering wheel and that you might just get off your ass and have a little bit of a look at what might be causing said vibrations because I think it's gonna be fairly obvious a bit of a walk around that you're going to see that that front left hand wheel and tires not quite right so i don't quite get that i'm not quite sure how people get themselves into that sort of trouble it seems to be they're either doing it on purpose for the drama which is pretty expensive on purpose for the drama or just like any basic real knowledge and instinct and stuff if you're going to be doing these folks are heading off around australia you're going to need a little bit of basic knowledge somewhere or you aren't going to make it the other one is of course Wow, well, we bought a caravan and we bought a car and we hooked it up, we threw a boat on top and we got weighed and we're heavy. And you know, there's all sorts of fascinating pictures on the thumbnail and what do we do now? I think the thought process is quite a vast about face. You need to be thinking about that part of what you're doing before someone else gets any of your dollars. And it gives you the opportunity to, to decrease your expectations in what that vehicle can pull, make a different purchase, or increase your vehicle expectations and move up to, I don't know, F250, Chevy 2500. Too much at stake to get caught on the other side and all of a sudden you're really wrong. And as I said, I, I like to do things standard, off the floor. It just keeps things black and white. Once you start making adjustments and changes, adds a gray area to things like insurance and warranty. Don't care well what everybody says. Once you start getting into the nitty gritty, that becomes a gray area. And you could end up fighting between the car company and the company that did your upgrades. 
I'm sure people will tell me I'm wrong. That's fine, that's my opinion. And that's how I do things because I just want a one-stop shop to go to should I need to pursue warranty or insurance. I don't know how you get into these things without understanding that you are moving into what I would call close to heavy vehicle, maybe even heavy vehicle depending on how big you're gonna be. Weights and legalities around these weights become an important thought before you put your pile of pineapples up on the bench top to take ownership of said gear. Well, today you probably do a bank transfer, but not many people wandering around today with big briefcases full of cash. Not that I've seen anyway. So just a few interesting bits and pieces there.